Alright sports fans, as we may notice, there's uh, something missing from the interior of the old land yacht. And, uh, what we've done is, we have removed the seats and uh, we're going to be replacing them with some nice leather uh, variants. So, so we've been doing just uh, stripping out the old stuff and in true automotive fashion get myself in here oh, there we go so underneath the passenger seat uh, we have some cash um, what else we got dirt matches more cash so it looks as if the passengers that were in this car were quite loose with their finances and on the driver's side we got a less quantity of cash and more dirt so uh, obviously the previous drivers were less flahulok with the cash but more messy so I'm uh, going to get in there and clean out all that crap and the back area isn't too bad I'm to give that a bit of a clean out and um, got some bolts to put back in and some leather seats to put back in so this is kind of the latest um, this is a general general upgrade, so leather seats, and I've got all kinds of other bits, trim bits, door bits, all that kind of thing associated with that, and uh, there's all the old junk that we've pulled out, so I'm hoping someone will take that, if not, it's going to have to go to the tip, um, it's not exactly in the best of health, so picked up the leather seats, very good price uh, from a BMW Breakers up in Northern Ireland and uh, got some other bits that we'll be discussing uh, in a later installment. Um, this guy in particular is going to feature heavily in a new uh, series that we're going to be starting very soon and uh, also when I was at the Breakers I got a differential uh, from a 530D and um, hopefully you might be able to see on the sticker that's a 2.81 ratio uh, very important because um, the I believe the ratio that's currently in the yacht um, for the 2.2 petrol was a 3.72 so that is going to um, greatly help us with the motor power band uh, gearing scenarios so we'll be going through um, draining the old oil out of that um, cleaning it up getting a bit of paint on it and getting some new synthetic uh, gear oil into that guy so in the meantime I'm gonna get the Hoover out and we're gonna clean out the mess in there or collect the, the cash um, always helpful to have some re re refunds on the purchase price of one's donor vehicle so going to get involved with that and uh, we'll come back when we're putting in the seats stand by for action all right so as we can see we've benefited greatly from a zap of the, of the old hoover and uh, made a big difference to the, to the old uh, interior carpets so what I've decided is I'm going to let you guys see me make a complete ass clown out of myself um, trying to put in these seats so uh, if you don't want to I suppose see how not to put uh, seats into a car best thing to do would be to look away now about these seats that they're not light. I guess nothing about this car is particularly light. Okay. Uh. Alright. Uh, don't! Don't! And uh, we're jammed. Usually happens to me. 
Nope, no success. Yeah. I don't think I'm overhauling any day soon anyway. This is definitely not the way to do it. Okay, well, we're in. We're in. We have seat action. Right, now. Okay. So, uh, next thing we gotta do is you have to connect the electrical connector. Now, on this particular model, um, these are manual seats, so the leather replacements are also manual. Um, so it's just a question of plugging back in. The only electrical connection to this will be the uh, pyro for the seat belt tensioner. So should be theoretically fairly straightforward. Um, of course, it doesn't mean it'll easy for me. Uh, the thing that amazes me are these connectors. Uh, there seems to be an infinite collection of them for doing just to make my life harder. They seem designed for... How does this work now? Mm. It's not looking good, oh hang on. Yeah. Well, it obviously has to go in either one way or the other. I'm kind of guessing. Well, let's have a look then, because the connector is down that end, so... Surely then... Surely that has to go in there, surely. Don't call me surely. Uh, yeah, that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? So... Hmm... That is not going to go in there, is it? No, it's not. Great. I told you this is going to be ass clowns. Right now, hang on. No, that, that really doesn't want to go in there. Amp. Hmm. You know, I'm probably going to find that they use two different kinds of connectors between model years and the seats came out of a 2000 and uh, this is a 2001 so you would have thought they couldn't have changed it around that much but knowing the Germans well I'd say it's a distinct possibility that they have changed it and it looks like they have actually right oh boy I picked an easier hobby like knitting or something less stressful than this. Well, that's not going to go in there obviously so no point even trying. Alright, better have a look at the at the old seats but this is what we've got. Oops. This is our connector on the car and this is the one that's on the seat. So something strange. I'm kind of guessing that they've, uh, that they've just changed the plan on me here, so stand by. Technical difficulties. Yeah, so wouldn't you know it, I had a look at the old driver's seat, and they're different. So, when in doubt, connector block. So amazes me why the automotive industry do this, you know, they just go down these routes of you spend a couple of million bucks developing something like this when a 
couple of goddamn spade terminals from the 1960s would have done the job, but you know, there you go. Suppose somebody's got to justify their existence, don't they? Alright, now that we got rid of that, I guess we see that we've got a yellow with a red and a yellow with a black. So that's going to our SRS system, I can assume. And up on the seat, I've got a red and a white. Now, what do you what do you guys think? Well, as usual in these situations, there's, there's a 50-50 chance I'll get it wrong the first time. So, you know. so yeah, I got it. Apologise for oh bugger lack of, of of updates on the old land yacht project recently. For that, been quite busy. But, uh, haven't been standing idly by anyway. Been getting on with stuff. So, like I said, we're going to have some new projects coming on stream pretty soon. All good stuff. And. Uh, Hopefully, be able to uh, get this baby on the road before too long because I kind of need it at this stage. The 3 Series is great, but really feel the limited range with those headway cells at this stage. So, yeah, we need to do that. I've got to organize a charger as well. It'll be one of the next projects. Probably going to be going with the uh, EMW system. Now, right, so that's gotten rid of all that uh, stuff. So let's chop this other end off the seat. And uh, see what we get there. Okay, right, there's more rubbish. Thank you very much. The light on the subject here probably wouldn't hurt. There we go. Alright, so. There we are. It does mean it get a little bit more difficult from taking the seats out again just for disconnecting this, but. I'd be the only person doing that, so I don't think it's going to cause us. Uh, oops, a daisy. There goes the phone. Okay, so I'll try and. There we go. Oh, yeah, this is Comedy Central, alright. I used to get the zoom working. Wow. Okay. There's a sketch out of Red Dwarf about that. Anyway, I get this connected up and then we'll get the seat in. So, stand by. Righty, so we have the seat in. So, it's just sitting there now. So, next thing we've got to do is get some of these bolts in. So, let's proceed with that. Uh, so, there's a pin here as well we have to locate that comes up to the chassis. Um, that Got to sit the seat rail down onto that, and, uh, and we got to get these torques guys back in. One on this side, and uh, one on the far side. So we get these ones in. Yeah, I think it's a T40, was it, or is it a 45? A 45. Yeah, it's a 45. There we go. Exciting stuff. Who knows? Where it'll all lead. Well, that one just nipped up and uh, 
same thing now with this guy here. Let's move back a little bit. Oops. Make sure that's on the patient. Yeah, we're good on that, okay. I think we're good. should end up using the oh ow I'm supposed to rip my backside open on one of these uh, re rear seat clipping devices so not good let's see if we can get a bit more action with this thing there we go that's that one nipped up quick nip on the far side there we go, right, that should be able to slide the seat back now and um, get the front ones. Right, seat is bolted in, so next thing we've got to do is we have to, <coughs> pardon me, uh, we have to connect the seat belt. So, this has to feed through here, so I'm probably going to need to do that from the back because it's going to be a bit of a two-handed operation, considering I'm doing my friggin' wildlife cameraman here with this damn thing everything's got to put it down somewhere because that's where we got to connect the seat belt so let's see how I can make a mess out of this part of the installation it shouldn't be that hard for me considering the track record so far now yeah. okay so let's get that part of the belt out of the way I'm gonna feed this down through the seat of course it was remarkably easy. Uh, oh wait now, hang on. Couldn't be that easy. It really is that easy for me. Wait now, hang on. There it is. Damn. Uh, there's gotta be something wrong there. I gotta have screwed up somewhere. Alright. So that looks like it. Um don't think it's twisted. Of course kinda hard to tell, but I don't think it is. I find it important to uh, have the old seat belts going on here. So, that should just go on like that. So, one of these uh, shorter Torx bolts. So, I gotta watch out for these uh, clip things here on the back seat mounting area because I came very close to damaging my reproductive organs on them there a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. And itself may not be such a bad thing because the last thing the world needs is any more of me anyway. Okay. Alright. That's looking pretty good. Of course now if the actual uh, seatbelt works it'll be even better. So let's see if we can put a bit of torque on that. Oh. a little bit. Mm. That's nice, Damien. If you had two brains, it'd be twice as dangerous. Yeah. There we go. That's not going to come out. Okay, so... Well, it's in. Well, at least the driver's side is. Seat belt's hooked up, and seat belt is functioning so I have to say very comfortable to sit in just on the first uh, initial um, trial run so we'll crack on get the rest of the okay, we get the passenger seat in I'm not going to be a sadist and uh, expose everyone to to the next round of madness doing that so um, we'll be back when we got that in and we'll uh, chuck in the back seat and uh, should be all set we got a fancy car doesn't look like a Jaguar has leather seats and a CD player so stand by for more alrighty folks so uh, as you might recall um, 
It was getting a bit late yesterday evening when I had the driver's seat in, so that's all in. I uh, just came out this morning uh, just to work out the electrical connections on the passenger seat and get it installed. Now, last night I was having a look on the internet and uh, as I had suspected, uh, it turns out there are two of these uh, different seat connections. Uh, fitted to the E39. There's this yellow one which was on the uh, newer model cars and this older model uh, black type. So of course the seats had this black type and the car had the newer yellow ones. So anyway, obviously on the passenger side things are fairly simple. Just chopped off the plug and bit of connector block for the seatbelt tensioner. So as I was saying, I went online and I had a look through some of the BMW forums. And, uh, oh, there was people saying that, oh no, you couldn't do that. You had to take the belt tensioner off the old seat because they were um, something like two different, um, uh, two different airbag control systems that were incompatible and so on. So... I decided to do it this morning before just uh, going down the road of tearing out the seat and doing all that crap to it. I plugged in the computer to see what errors were in, were in the um, airbag system. So I had a look, and there were no there were no errors for the driver's seat. Obviously, I, I had some here uh, passenger side because uh, I didn't have the seat hooked up, but no errors on the driver's side. So, now on the passenger seat, um, unlike the driver's seat, we've got some more wiring going on. And the reason for that is that in the passenger seats on these cars, we can try and get a bit of camera action. You see a little black box here. Uh, that black box is part of something called the passenger seat occupancy sensor and um, there's a pad, a kind of a pressure pad built into the seat that tells the car when there is somebody sitting in the passenger seat and if there isn't, uh, in the event of a crash, it won't deploy the passenger side, side, side airbags. Uh, so <clears throat> that was a straight swap. Uh, I literally just was uh, was able to uh, just remove the harness. What I did was I took the black plug wiring harness off the seat, the new, newer seat, and um, so this plug here uh, for the passenger seat occupancy sensor was the very same. So I was able to just take that off and took the wiring harness from the old uh, cloth seat and just plugged straight straight in. Uh, with the yellow well, yellow plug and plugged into the uh, black box there the little white connector on top of it so again connected up to PC and it just told me uh, yeah that's fine passenger seat sensor is good and um, only problem is being the um, the seat belt tensioner so again decided to just take a flyer on that and uh, did a very quick mod um, you can't see now because of this camera is getting all washed out but I just chopped off the cable um, and joined up the uh, yellow plug to the black plug cables plugged in the computer cleared the codes we're done so it looks as if in my case anyway that the two seatbelt tensioner systems are in fact uh, compatible versus what was being said on some of the forums. So I'm going to get this wiring tidied up, um, put a crimp terminal on those wires, cable tie all that stuff back in, and we get the passenger seat in, and the uh, back seat to be straightforward, there's no electrical connections on there, so uh, stand by for more. Okay, so front seat's in, bolted up, headrests on, Whole shooting match. Um, airbag systems perfectly happy. Uh, check the live data on the computer. And it's perfectly happy with the uh, belt tensioners and seat occupancy sensor. So now we have to move to the back side. Now this uh, should be reasonably okay. 
what we have to do is we've got one, uh, two, three and four clips there that we have to catch the seat on. So we're going to try to clip that in and there's two small 10mm bolts, one on each side. So let's see how that goes. Okay, as we can hopefully see, that's our rear seats in. So it's pretty much the interior. Have to do the door cards. To, uh, we'll panic on those. Main thing is get the seats in, bolt it in, and uh, we're all good. Back soon, folks.